After this, David subdued and humbled the Philistines by conquering Gath and its surrounding towns. David also conquered the land of Moab, and the Moabites became David's subjects and brought him tribute money. Then David destroyed the forces of King Hedadezer of Zobah as far as Mamath. When Hedadezer marched out to strengthen his control along the Euphrates River, David captured 1,000 chariots, 7,000 charioteers, and 20,000 foot soldiers. Then he crippled all but 100 of the chariot horses. When Aramines from Damascus arrived to help Hezadezer, David killed 22,000 of them. Then he placed several army garrisons in Damascus. The Aramean capital and the Arameans became David's subjects and brought him tribute money. So the Lord gave David victory wherever he went. David brought the gold shields of Hedadezer's officers to Jerusalem, along with a large amount of bronze from Hadadezer's cities of Tebeth and Kun. Later Solomon melted the bronze and used it for the temple. He molded it into the bronze sea, the pillars, and the various bronze utensils used at the temple. When King Toy of Hamath heard that David had destroyed the army of King Hadadezer of Zobah, he sent his son Joram to con Congratulate David on his success. Hedadezer and Toy had long been enemies, and there had been many wars between them. Joram presented David with many gifts of gold, silver, and bronze. King David dedicated all these gifts to the Lord, along with the silver and gold he had taken from the other nations he had subdued. Adam, Moab, Ammon, Philistia, in a milk, Abishai, son of Zuriah, destroyed 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He placed army garrisons throughout Adam, and all the Edomites became David's subjects. This was another example of how the Lord made David victorious wherever he went. David reigned over all Israel and was fair to everyone. Joab, son of Zariah was commander of the army. Josephat, son of Elud, was the royal historian. Zadok, son of Atub, and Elmelech, son of Abathar, were the priest. Sariah was the court secretary. Benani, son of Jehoiada, was captain of the king's bodyguard. David's son served as the king's chief assistants. Sometime after this, King Nash of the Ammonites died, and his son, Hanun, became king. David said, I'm going to show complete loyalty to Hanun, because his father, Nash, was always completely loyal to me. So David sent ambassadors to express sympathy to Hanun about his father's death. But when David's ambassadors arrived in the land of Ammon, Hanan, Hanan's advisors said to him, Do not really think these men are coming here to honor your father. No, David has sent them here to spy out the land so that they can come in and conquer it. So Hanan seized David. So Hannah seized David's ambassadors and shaved their beards, cut off their robes at the buttocks, and sent them back to David in shame. When David heard what had happened, he sent messengers to tell the men to stay at Jericho until their beards grew out, for they were very embarrassed by their appearance. Now the people of Ammon realized how seriously they had angered David. So Hanan and the Ammonites sent 38 tons of silver to hire chariots and troops from Aran. Naharim, Aram, Makkah, and Zobah. They also hired 32,000 chariots and secured the support of the king of Makkah and his army. 
These forces camped at Medeba, Medeba, where they were joined by the Ammonite troops that Hanun had recruited from his own towns. When David heard about this, he sent Joab and all his warriors to fight them. The Ammonites' troops drew up their battle lines at the gate of the city, while the other kings positioned themselves to fight in the open fields. When Joab saw that he would have to fight on two fronts, he chose the best troops in his army. He placed them under his personal command and led them out to fight the Armenes in the fields. He left the rest of the army under the command of his brother, Abishai, who was to attack the Ammonites. If the Armenes are too strong for me, then come over and help me, Joab told his brother. And if the Ammonites are too strong for you, I will help you. Be courageous. Let us fight bravely to save our people and the cities of our God. May the Lord's will be done. When Joab and his troops attacked, the Aramines began to run away. And when the Ammonites saw the Aramines running, they ran from Abishai and retreated into the city. Then Joab returned to Jerusalem. The Aramines now realized that they were no match for Israel, so they summoned additional Aramean troops from the other side of the Euphrates River. These troops arrived under the command of Soba the commander of all Hezadezer's forces. When David heard what was happening, he mobilized all Israel across the Jordan River and positioned his troops in battle formation. Then he engaged the enemy troops in battle, and they fought against him. But again, the Armenians fled from the Israelites. This time, David's forces killed 7,000 charities and 40,000 foot soldiers, including Sobach, Sobach, the commander of their army. When the servants of Hezadezer realized they had been defeated by Israel, they surrendered to David and became his subjects. After that, the Arameans were no longer willing to help the Ammonites. The crown was made of gold and set with gems, and it weighed about 75 pounds. David took a vast amount of plunder from the city. He also made slaves of the people of Rabbah and forced them to labor with saws, picks, and axes. That is how he dwelt with the people of all the Ammonite cities. Then David and his army returned to Jerusalem. After this, war broke out with the Philistines at Gezer. As they fought, Sibekia from Husha killed Saf, a descendant of the giants, and so the Philistines were subdued. During another battle with the Philistines, Elhana, son of Jar, killed Lami, the brother of Goliath of Gath. The handle of Lami's spear was as thick as a weaver's beam. In another battle with the Philistines at Gath, a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, a descendant of the giants, defied and taunted Israel, but he was killed by Jonathan, the son of David's brother Shemiah. These Philistines were descendants of the giants of Gath, but they were killed by David and his warriors. Satan rose up against Israel and caused David to take a census of the Israelites. David gave, those, gave these orders to Joab and his commanders. Take a census of all the people in the land from Beersheba in the south to Dan in the north and bring me the totals so I may know how many there are. But Joab replied, May the Lord increase the number of his people a hundred times over. But why, my Lord, do you want to do this? Are they not all your servants? Why must you cause Israel to sin? But the king insisted that Joab take the census. So Joab traveled throughout Israel to count the people. Then he returned to Jerusalem and reported the number of people to David. There are one million one hundred thousand men of military age in Israel 
and 470,000 in Judah. But Joab did not include the tribes of Levi and Benjamin in the census because he was so distressed at what the king had made him do. God was very displeased with the census and he punished Israel for it. Then David said to God, I have sinned greatly and shouldn't have taken the census. Please forgive me for doing this foolish thing. Then the Lord spoke to Gad, David's seer. This was the message. Go and say to David, this is what the Lord says. I will give you three choices. Choose one of these punishments and I will do it. So Gad came to David and said, these are the choices the Lord has given you. You may choose three years of famine, three months of destruction by your enemies, or three days of severe plagues as the angel of the Lord brings devastation throughout the land of Israel. Think this over and let me know what answer to give the Lord. This is a desperate situation, David replied to Gad. But let me fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is very great. Do not let me fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel, and 70,000 people died as a result. And God sent an angel to destroy Jerusalem. But just as the angel was preparing to destroy it, just as the angel was preparing to destroy it, the Lord repented and said to the death angel, Stop! That is enough. At that moment, the angel of the Lord, at that moment, the angel of the Lord was standing by the threshing floor of Aranoth the Jubasite. David looked up and saw the angel of the Lord standing between heaven and earth with his sword drawn, stretched out over Jerusalem. So David and the leaders of Israel put on sackcloth to show their distress and fell down with their faces to the ground. And David said to God, I am the one who called for the census. I am the one who has sinned and done wrong. But these people are innocent. What have they done? O oh Lord my God, let your anger fall against me and my family, but do not destroy your people. Then the angel of the Lord told Gad to instruct David to build an altar to the Lord at the threshing floor at Aru, uh, Aranath, the Jubasite. So David obeyed the instructions the Lord had given him through Gad. Aranuth, Aranuth who was busy threshing wheat at the time, turned and saw the angel there. His four sons who were with him ran away and hid. But Arunath saw the king approaching. He left the threshing. When Arunath saw the king approaching, he left his threshing floor and bowed to the ground before David. David said to Arunath, Let me buy this threshing floor from you at its full price. Then I will build an altar to the Lord there, so that he will stop the plague. Take it, my Lord, and use it as you wish, Aranath said to David. Here are oxen for the burnt offerings, and you can use the threshing tools for wood to build a fire on the altar. And take the wheat for the grain offering. I will give it all to you. But the king replied to Arunath, no, I insist on paying what it is worth. I cannot take what is yours and give it to the Lord. I will not offer a burnt offering that has cost me nothing. So David gave Arunath 600 pieces of gold in payment for the threshing floor. David built an altar there to the Lord and sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings. And when David prayed, the Lord answered him by sending fire from heaven to Burn up the offering on the altar. Then the Lord spoke to the angel who put the sword back into its sheath. When David saw that the Lord had answered his prayers, he offered sacrifices there at 
Arunith's threshing floor. At that time, the tabernacle of the Lord and the altar that Moses made in the wilderness were located at the hill of Gibeon. Gibeon. But David was not able to go there to inquire of God because he was terrified by the drawn sword. Sword. He was terrified by the drawn sword of the angel of the Lord. That's the end of 21. I hope you will continue reading on with me into 1 Chronicles 22 through 27. Hope you have a blessed day in Jesus' name. Peace.